React is fantastic for large projects, but for small projects, you might want to use something like HTMX. It's a very simple way to add interactivity to a web page. Let's go into Astro and figure out exactly what HTMX is and how to translate your React skills into this new world of HTMX. All right, this is the simple test application that we're gonna build. It's gonna show you all of the core mechanics of HTMX. Now we're gonna start off with this page example right here at the top. You click on the different pages and you load dynamically the data of each one of those pages into that table. Let's get going. To start off with, we have an empty Astro application on the left-hand side and the browser on the right-hand side. First thing we need to do is add HTMX to our project. The first thing we're gonna add is htmx.org. Yes, that is the actual package name of HTMX. And then we're gonna add Astro HTMX. Astro HTMX is just a simple integration that just injects that HTMX onto our Astro page. Now over in our Astro configuration, I'm just gonna bring in that Astro HTMX and then I'm gonna bring it into our integrations. And that's it. Now we can use HTMX anywhere we want to in the site. So the first thing I'll do is bring in some HTML. Right at the top here, we got our page example. Then we got our page links. You can just click on them. Right now they just go to hash, which means the same page. Now down at the bottom, we have an empty content div. That's where we're gonna put the contents of that table. And it's got an ID contents, and that's how we're going to reference that. So the first HTMX primitive we're gonna learn is hxget. hxget just says to HTMX, when you click on that link, go and perform a get operation, and then you give it the URL. In this case, it's gonna that URL is going to be slash partials slash list with a page, and that page is gonna be the page that they clicked on. Then you wanna give it a target. Where do I put that? So we're gonna go and take that output from that partials list and then put it somewhere. Well, we're gonna put it, we're gonna put it in contents and we do that by using hash contents. We give it any kind of query selector to go and find it. In this case, that's an ID contents and that's gonna go and take that output and put it in that contents div. But of course now when you click on one of those, that HX git, which is going to slash partial slash list is getting a 404 because there's no partials list. So let's go create that. So in the pages directory, I'm gonna create a new file, partials list.astro. And within that, I'm just gonna put a div that tells us what page we clicked on. How cool is that? Super easy. Now there is one thing you've gotta watch out for here, and let's go take a look at our inspector to see what that is. So as I click on each of these, we can see that we're getting the page. As we click on that, we can see that we get a full response, and that full response has everything in it, and what we really want is just the HTML for that div. So the way to make that happen in Astro is to define it as a partial. Making that happen is as simple as adding partial equals true. And now we get back just the div that we want. Now to make this real, we have some fake user data over in our slash components. And we also have a user list astro component that just takes that data and formats it. So let's go bring in both of those to our list partial and we'll make page a local. We'll make sure that it's a number and it's defaulted to one. And then we'll go and use that user list to just take our data and slice it so we get the first page of our users. Is it save? Try again, and wow, that is really cool. Now, one thing I don't like is that it doesn't start by showing you the first page, so let's go make that happen. So go back over here to our index, we'll bring in that partial, and then just drop it in here for our contents. Now we get our first page automatically, and as we click through, we get the additional pages. How easy is that? You can see why people are really stoked about HTMX. Now let's take a look at HTMX triggers by creating a search field in HTMX. It's really easy, you're gonna love it. All right, let's go add the HTML for our search box. Right up at the top we have a horizontal rule as well as a H1 with our search example and then we've got our input field and finally our div where we're gonna put our search results. And so far we're just gonna use HX get with partial search which we don't have yet and then HX target to target that search results. So let's go build our search route. Just like before, we're gonna bring in the users and the user list, but this time we're going to get the search parameter and then we're gonna go and filter that list based on that search. Otherwise, it's basically the same thing. Let's hit save and then we'll try it out. So let's search for a particular value. Now, in order to make it actually make that HX git, we have to blur the field. So let's hit tab and now we get our HX git. But that's not particularly great, right? We want it to search as we type and then debounce it. So how do we do that? Well, we use HX trigger for that. We can say that we want a trigger, which is the key up when things have changed, and then we want a delay of 500 milliseconds, and that's our debounce. Let's hit save, try it again, and there you go, dynamic search. How easy is that? So a core premise of HTMX is HTML as an engine of application state, and we've been doing a little bit of state management so far. For example, our debounce search, 
What happens if you want to do something like, say, a counter? How do we do a counter in HTMX? Let's go create a new partial called counter. And into there, I'll bring some HTML. Now, this HTML is going to have a form with an ID of counter. And it's going to have an HX post, not HX get, in this case, post. So we do post. And it's going to go to partials counter, which is where this is. And then we're going to have a hidden value for our count. And then a button that submits and then also lists our count. So at this point, it's going to say zero all the time because we don't actually increment that value yet. So let's go bring this into our page. So now we've got our counter component. Let's go bring this in at the bottom. Now when we click on it, we're not actually incrementing, but there are actually form posts going to the server. So what we need to do is get the current count we had from the form data and then just increment it, see what happens. So we'll get our form data and then we'll just get the count out of that and then we'll increment it by one. All right, let's try it again. And now we've got an incrementer. Awesome. But what happens if you want to click on a button and update multiple places on the page? Can you do that with HTMX? Sure you can. There's a thing called out of bounds swap. So let's go take a look at how to implement that. The first thing we need to do is put another counter on the page that we can update. So right up at the top here, we'll say we have something like a header. And that header has another counter in it. So let's hit save and see where that goes. That goes up here. We get that zero. Cool. And we get this div ID with another counter. So when we click on the increment down here, we want to see both of these get updated. Well, how do we do that? Let's go over to counter. And then we'll say that we have another div with the ID another counter. And then we'll use HX swap OOB. So HX swap means swap this HTML and OOB means out of band, which means that it's not contained as part of this fragment. So let's hit save and see what happens. Well, what happens is we get a zero down here, which is not great. And then we increment it, we increment all of those. We're incrementing this value here and we're incrementing that one up there. So is there a way to make sure that we don't get that initial div here so we don't have two and other counters? Well, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is just say, well, on the first one, we don't want to output it. So we'll just put a check in there for count. And there we go. Now when we click increment, we increment both the local counter as well as the counter in the header. So if you got something like an e-commerce system where when you click on add to cart, you want the little cart count up in the header to change, this is going to make that happen for you. All right, now all this code is available to you for free on GitHub and a link in the description right down below. And there are two more things that I want to show you to really get you excited about HTMX. The first is to compare this to a React implementation. So in that same GitHub repo is a React version that has all the stuff we've come to know and love about React. Use state, use effect, everything is done on the client. Let's go take a look at how this looks in the browser. So the React version is on the left. The HTMX that we just did is on the right. And you can click and get the React version. And of course, the big difference here is what's actually happening over the wire. So as we click, we can see the JSON data coming in. And that, and that JSON data is, of course, JSON. So everything that's required to actually render all of that JSON onto the screen is JavaScript that has to come along with the page. So how much does all that JavaScript actually weigh? Well, when I hit refresh on a built version of this, it's about 145K worth of JavaScript. If we take a look at the same thing over in HTMX, the amount of JavaScript is about 49K, and that would be absolutely limited. So you're never going to get beyond that initial 49K. You're, as you add more components and more complexity, just going to stick at that 49K because that 49K is all that's required to do all of the conceivable HTMX that you'd want to do for your entire application. And of course, as a thanks to you for watching this channel, there's also in that same directory an HTMX Movies app that takes all of the stuff that we've just learned about HTMX and turns it into a cool movie app sitting on top of the movie database. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at HTMX. I hope you're as excited about it as I am. I also do a lot of React and XJS stuff as well, different tools for different applications. If you want to go check out my course on Next.js, it's pronextjs.dev. There's an excellent state management tutorial up there already. Subscribe today. And of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.